Uh, good afternoon. My name is John Budai. I'll be filling in for Jim Wallace today. I'm an engineering intern for McClanahan and I'm about to complete my master's in biosystems and agricultural engineering at Michigan State University. My pr the presentation is on integrating anaerobic digestion and nutrient separation, which is a synergistic partnership. So, historically, dairy manure has been land applied, consistent with the agronomic requirements of growing crops, and due to consideration of the dairy industry over the last 40 years, animal density has also increased dramatically, creating transportation, storage, and environmental challenges. Also, environmental constraints and water scarcity is more recognized. Uh, nutrient separation is a way to address those problems, especially the envi environmental risk on farms. There's a potential to improve the way nutrients are used, either by managing nutrients on fields or selling the nutrients to enhance dairy profitabil pro profitability. <clears throat> um, lost my spot here. There's also great potential to run boiler systems, generate electricity, and reuse waste heat to offset costs, as you've probably seen from most of the presentations uh, the past few days. A little bit of background. Uh, the way we've been able to set, uh, study the nutrient separation system was by constructing a fully functional demonstration, demonstration system located in Weberville, Michigan. The Carbon Poo Dairy uh, milks about 800 cows, um, and our demonstration facility manages about 75 to 100 of those cows. The purpose of the research facility was to become familiar with the process and gather necessary uh, data for commercial commercialization. The facility has been operational since October of to, uh, 2013. Uh, here's the nutrient separation system. It integrates anaerobic digestion, ultrafiltration, um, air stripping, and reverse osmosis. Uh, the reverse osmosis uh, can concentrate nutrients and uh, produce a discharge quality water. Uh, we start by pre-treating solid and sand separated manure via anaerobic digestion, followed by ultrafiltration, air stripping and absorption, and reverse osmosis as you've seen there. Every step you've seen here is uh, off the shelf and uh, it's not unique, but the operational process is unique. The first step is pre-treating manure uh, with anaerobic digestion to produce a homogeneous homogeneous feedstock or digestate for the ultrafiltration and produce biogas. Uh, we use an anaerobic digester that has a 35,000 gallon working capacity and has a double roof to uh, repel snow and rain. The biogas is burned by a flare system at our R&D facility. However, when operating on a full scale system, we may recommend using the gas for boilers or an engine generator that could offset costs due to electricity and in some cases use the electricity to put back on the grid and possibly uh, generate some profitable credits. Uh, anaerobic digestion is a great way to keep the digestate warm and in a homogeneous form. The next phase is ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is a membrane-based process where UF permeate is separated on the molecular level from reject called UF concentrate. The ultrafiltration system, or UF system, contains uh, five three-inch modules. The full-scale system will contain 10-inch modules. Uh, the commercial-scale system will Id look identical to this pilot system, where the only difference is that there will be four sets of five 10-inch modules. Here's a representation of how the semi-permeable ultrafiltration membrane works. The membranes are the small straws uh, you can't really see it with this, but these straws here, those are the membranes. Uh, the feed is sent through those straws at low concentrate pressure of about 10 to 15 psi and temperatures around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The UF permeate, or T water, uh, is allowed to pass through the pores within the membrane tangentially, <clears throat> while the concentrate containing all suspended solids and microbes continues to flow through the membrane straws. You have concentrate uh, contains about 95% of the phosphorus and 88% of the organic nitrogen. The UFT water, or UF permeate, uh, is devoid of suspended solids and contains some dissolved solids, ammonia, and potassium. 
Uh, here's the way the UF works with the anaerobic digester. Uh, it's a feed and bleed configuration. The digester is fed manure in intervals, while the ultrafiltration system pulls digestate out of the uh, digester, uh, extracts UFT water from the digestate, and sends a UF concentrate back to the digester to maintain phosphorus levels and a total solids around 6 to 7 percent. Whatever overflows from the digester is sent to a lagoon for either solid separation or land application. The typical digester feed, which is sand and salt separated manure, has a total solids content about 3 to 3.5 percent. Hydraulic retention time is 12 days and the solids retention time is 54 days. The total solids destruction is about 42 percent and the volatile solids is about 68 percent. Each unit of mass converted to biogas represents a unit of mass that does not need to go through the nutrient separation system. We expect to produce energy very efficiently from the biogas that is made. Uh, step three is the air stripping process. And here we take the UF permeate and send it to the air stripper and an absorber to take out ammonia to make ammonium sulfate. There are two columns. One is the air stripper, the other one's the absorber. Uh, they're both packed with three and a half inch tri pack in order to increase surface area for air stripping and absorption of ammonia. A blower with an electric motor also is also part of the system that blows volatile ammonia through, the, through that system. Here's a schematic of how the process works. We draw, oh, sorry. <laughs> We draw up a UF permeate or T water, which is rich in ammonia, down through the air stripper. Um, that's seen from the top there, going down. Air is sent in from the bottom to push volatile ammonia up through that column, down the piping, into the um, absorber, uh, where dilute sulfuric acid is dropped from the top, and air with the ammonia is uh, sent from the bottom up through the top and we concentrate ammonium sulfate down at the bottom. Air without ammonia is sent through the top. Here, <clears throat> here's the relationship of ammonia and ammonium. The relationship is shifted to the right based on pH and temperature. However, pH modification is very expensive. Instead, we use anaerobic digestion, which provides the opportunity to burn biogas and generate heat to make the shift possible inexpensively. The typical ammonium sulfate concentration is 35%. The final step is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis concentrates a potassium rich stream and permeates clean water, which may be suitable for direct discharge. The reverse osmosis system, is, which is used for our testing, has uh, conventional spiral wound seawater elements. This is a very simple pump and membrane process, similar to the UF system, which rejects um, compounds on the ionic level at concentrate pressures above 300 psi. As you can see in the photograph, we produce clean water from the airstrip T water. Here's a representation of how the reverse osmosis system works. The yellow and gray sections of the membrane is actually a spiral wound cellulose acetate membrane stacked in between membrane spacers, which allows the uh, reverse osmosis concentrate to flow through and uh, flow in between those uh, membranes and spacers while the permeate passes through the membranes into the center, which is the permeate collection tube. The RO model must account for fouling and inorganic scale. Uh, must account for organic and inorganic scale. There's a tremendous effort to maximize uh, recovery of clean water. By optimizing the system, we have been able to produce 55% clean water. That's over half of the volume of digestate fed to the system. So that's the entire process from start to finish. We have also included the mass balance of the system. Here we take the digestate, which is 100%. Uh, through the UF system, we make 80%, which is T water, and 20%, which is UF concentrate. 
um, the 80%, which is tea water, is sent through the air stripping columns and absorber to concentrate ammonium sulfate, which is about 1% of the 80% volume. From there, the air strip tea water is processed through the reverse osmosis system to produce 24% RO concentrate and 55% clean water. <coughs> However, we can produce above 65% clean water from the RO system if a solid liquid separation technique is used, such as centrifugation. Uh, the greatest benefit to the system is obviously the generation of clean water, with the added benefit of producing a value-added concentrated fertilizer. Other cost benefits are energy recovery, improved nutrient management, reduced well water pumping, and improved environmental protection. These include reduced pathogen and nutrient runoff and carbon emissions. These are all benefits that were not subtracted from the cost analysis. To scale up our system for a 3,500 cow dairy following manure separation, uh, 122,500 gallons per day of manure at a TS concentration of 3.5% uh, would be sent through the system. The total energy potential is 590 kilowatts. This could be used to offset the electrical parasitic load, which is about 450 kilowatts. The remainder energy could be used on-site or sent back to the grid. Uh, some assumptions that are made would be that electrical production cost is estimated to be 2.5 cents per kilowatt, and the nitrogen captured as ammonia is a value-added product, offsetting about half the cost of sulfuric acid. The treatment costs about 1.5 cents per gallon of clean water produced. We managed to determine that if excess electricity is used to offset the farm demands, the cost would be about 1 cent per gallon of clean water produced. This shows the effectiveness of using anaerobic digestion coupled with nutrient separation. It truly is a uh, synergy that is known to be effective, especially by reducing envi environmental risks and offsetting costs. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Are there any questions?